Yes, secure. Hopefully this time. We have all those black box solutions. That platform and the other one, those tools. Of course they don't talk to each other. Your reality is frustrating. It's diminishing your potential. Um, who is that? You're going through the same old motions, trying to bridge the same old gaps. Because it's always been just the way things are. Hold on, are you narrating my life? You're walled in by a lack of creativity. Caged by a reality where traditional tools stifle the freedom to excel. I'm caged by what? Oh... But what if there was something better? What if we could smash through the walls of our broken reality? Reach out and grasp a whole new way of managing SecOps with better tools, security and technology to embrace something extraordinary, a future without limits, where you have the flexibility you need to build the kind of security programs that meet your unique needs, and where powerful technology is designed API first, working together naturally, in a way that simply works. Lima Charlie's SecOps Cloud Platform brings together critical cybersecurity capabilities for a whole new kind of security reality craft customizable security solutions that make sense for your organization. Take control over your entire security posture with full visibility. Lima Charlie provides teams with the modern tool sets they need to build defenses against tomorrow's cybersecurity threats. This is Lima Charlie's SecOps Cloud Platform. This is security beyond limits. Welcome to this exciting event for those looking to stay at the forefront of cybersecurity. My name is Christopher Luft, and I'm thrilled to be your host for today's sessions. As one of the co-founders of Lima Charlie, I'm very passionate about the transformative power that the SecOps Cloud platform provides for the entire cybersecurity industry. In a world where digital transformation has become the norm, cybersecurity professionals face unprecedented challenges. The traditional approach of managing dozens of disparate point solutions and siloed security solutions while attempting to control costs is really no longer sufficient. It's time to embrace a new era of cybersecurity in the SecOps Cloud platform, one that treats cybersecurity as a set of capabilities, much like how cloud providers did for IT. And we challenge you to question the status quo and open your mind to a new way of thinking about security operations. Today's session will reshape your understanding of modern SecOps. We are hosting three separate intriguing sessions that will feature real-world case studies. We'll dive into some unique use cases and share how the SecOps Cloud platform impacts enterprise SOC teams, service providers, and security product builders. If you're not already registered, links to the subsequent sessions are available in the description below. Now, joining me to provide insights, expertise, the vision, and how the SecOps Cloud platform enables security practitioners to solve the unique problems faced by their organizations at any scale is none other than Lima Charlie's founder and CEO, Maxime Lamoth Broussard. Maxime, it's great to have you here. How are you doing today? Doing great, doing great. Very happy to be with you. Awesome. Before we get into any of the specifics, I want to take a minute and talk about something that has been getting a lot of headlines lately, and that is this idea of platformization in cybersecurity. Lima Charlie has been building the SecOps Cloud platform intentionally and with a singular vision for several years now. We have a very clear idea of what a cybersecurity platform should be. However, it seems like a lot of different companies have been throwing their hats into the ring recently with their own ideas about what a cybersecurity platform should look like. Maxime, what is your opinion on the current state of cybersecurity platformization? So it's interesting. Um, like you say, you know, we, we've been part of that discussion really kind of leading it for a long time right that that we we had a very clear vision what we wanted to put forward and that we've been building and recently we've seen these other uh, these other existing vendors i would say repurpose their message right so they are trying to repurpose who they are and what they are into the new narrative where you know they they've become they become a platform is kind of the statement I think it's really important to understand the distinction there. 
of uh, the types of different platforms, right? What what it can uh, what they can do, what are their limitations? Meaning, platformization is not a single thing. It means very different things to different people. And I think if we are not careful, the definition that will win is really, I think, not really the definition that that should move forward. So specifically, legacy vendors are used to buying a lot of different companies, putting them under the same roof, putting them under all uh, a single web portal and kind of calling it a suite and then, uh, you know, selling very complex contracts over large parts of that suite, like big bundles. Sometimes some of it works well. Sometimes, you know, some of it works great. And then the rest doesn't work so well because, well, it's been built by 20 different you know, teams across 10 other companies. So it's it's no wonder that you know what you get out of that is a very specific definition of platform, which is really the same thing that you're getting today. Meaning, very very heavy lock in, difficult of access. You're left as a as a user that of that uh, of that platform. And I think what's important is that there is another. There's another alternative definition to this, and I think it's one that makes me a lot more hopeful. And that definition is one that already exists, um, that's been used somewhere else already, not reinventing anything in a way here, but it's the cloud provider, right? Cloud providers are fundamentally um, platforms, um, even Google Cloud, even, you know, their name is Google Cloud Platform. Um, and and what's important to understand is that the platformization, if viewed from the perspective of the cloud, from cloud providers, ends up in a completely different space. Instead of ending up in a world where you know there's five different gigantic vendors that you get stuck into that you know try to protect all of their solutions, that try to kill out competition, that try to kill out innovation unless it's done within their garden. When you're thinking about a cloud provider, now it's the opposite, right? We end up with solutions that are looking to be a net enabler of innovation in the industry because they're designed not to be the only game, you know, in, in and on the block, but instead to be where innovation can be built upon, where great things can happen on top of it. So it's it's a way for the industry to grow together. And not just to churn and become the same thing that we've been, you know, already for the past decade. Awesome. Well, thank you for laying that out. Uh, I think you make a beautiful case for the kind of work we're doing here. Um, so we're expecting a lot of folks here who are new to Lima Charlie and the SecOps Cloud platform. Let's kick things off with you helping everyone understand what the SecOps Cloud platform is and, and how it's revolutionizing the enterprise SOC. Let's start with what I think is the most obvious question. What is the SecOps Cloud Platform? It's the most, it's the most obvious question and also <laughs> I think the most obvious answer at this very point in time, meaning, you know, we, we've been talking about platformization in our own way. We've been talking about how the cloud provider type of approach is the one that is truly beneficial to the industry. So what the SecOps Cloud Platform is, well, it's not rocket science. It's our approach, which is based on a cloud provider kind of approach, right? Put very succinctly, we are taking the blueprint of how one builds a cloud provider and all of the characteristics that go along with that. But instead of creating primitives like virtual machines or storage or queues or, you know, name it, we are building security operations capabilities, but within that kind of environment. So specifically, the type of environment that I'm talking about, the qualities that go along with it are things like completely open APIs. APIs are not a thing to be monetized in a very narrow, specific way when you have one of the you know 500 different types of bundles that are available. APIs are the foundation of the capabilities. They're, they're first class. It's also about having control. So when you're using a cloud provider, you have full control over all of the capabilities that you're using. 
right? There's no capability where, where you start using it and then the vendor tells you, here's exactly the one way that you'll be using it because otherwise it won't work at all. And by the way, you can only use it in, in that way. And if you have different scenarios, different, different ideas that you can't do that. No, that's not how the cloud works. Fundamentally, the cloud is very open. So you're always fully in control. It's also things like being builder friendly. So being builder friendly, on, in fact, I would say is really one of the cornerstones here, which is this idea that for somebody to build on top of cloud platform capabilities or the SecOps cloud platform, it is not a question of having to you know, sell your soul to some vendor and pay you know, 80% of your margins uh, by going through 150 pages, you know, uh, agreement with that vendor and having to put their logo on everything. That is not how the cloud works, right? The cloud works with here, here's the set of capabilities. They're unopinionated, so you're in control. And if you want to build something on top of that, you, you always have the ability to build something, go to market a lot faster than you would have if you had to reinvent the wheel. So the cloud providers have been able to be this, this great driver because of their, their builder friendliness. And the SecOps cloud platform is the same thing. It's also things like pay as you go. Again, right? I, I kind of put it uh, sometimes with a cloud provider, if you have a credit card, you get whatever you want at whatever scale you want, whenever you want it. And that's, that's really the basic promise of it. So it means that if you are an incident responder and you get a, you know, a call at 3 a.m. and you need to go and deploy on, in an organization, you don't have to ring up the vendor and try to negotiate you know, what the next year of that contract is going to look like. Or if you're in an enterprise and you onboard a new SaaS product, you don't have to re go and renegotiate your capacity for you know, whatever contract. If fundamentally, you get whatever you need whenever you want it. So that is what the SecOps cloud platform is. It's we're bottling all of these things and then we are building the foundation for running security operations. So that means foundational products like EDR is one of them, being able to uh, bring in telemetry from any other SaaS solution or on-premises, being able to automate detection and response off of it. Um, solving issues around compliance. So being able to retain over long periods of time and search that data. Being able to optimize the data on its way to other sources, to other destination of information. So you can see that the way that I'm describing it is, is really in an open, unopinionated way. And that is because fundamentally, the SecOps cloud platform does not believe that one vendor is magically the best to provide everything for all users at the same time using the same software package. Instead, it puts the security professionals in the driver's seat for them to go and do the things that, that they know need happening. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what the SecOps Cloud Platform is about. All right. Well, let's take a step back for a minute. Let's imagine a world without the SecOps Cloud Platform. What kind of landscape and challenges are faced by someone looking to create a security solution for a problem or gap inside of their organization today? Yeah, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of friction in the industry. And I think there's a lot of friction that has been assumed by the industry that there's no other way that this could be done. I kind of mentioned a bunch of those already. So the very first problem that a lot of people will encounter is the ability to gain access to capabilities. It sounds easy. It sounds simple. In many other industries, that has been solved. There's no, there's no mystery there. But for some reason in cybersecurity, we're having a lot of difficulty from those legacy vendors that don't want to let go. So it's this idea that if you want to go and uh, build some new capability, uh, a, you know, perhaps leveraging some internal capability that you have in your own organization, fundamentally, uh, you will have difficulty to go and get access to the product to be able to try it or to not even try it, but I would say even engineer generate a proof of concept based on it because a lot of them will be walled behind 
you know, going in and phoning the vendor, maybe they'll return your call if you're big enough. Um, and then you'll have to go through a couple level of salespeople, try to understand the little bits of marketing that they have available on their website about the actual capabilities. So there's so many gates between you and just trying the solution. So that's, that's really the first big problem. And there's a bunch of other problems that fall off of that. So the other big one is going to be the opinion, right? There's a lot of solutions out there that, have, that are very highly opinionated. And that's really good for a lot of people, right? If you're a tiny organization and you just you know, need something that just does a thing and you don't have security, people don't want to be thinking about it, that's probably what you want. But if you are an organization where you have security professionals working, um, being highly opinionated means that you will be very limited in what you're able to go and do and test with that platform. So you will um, you'll be really fighting against the product to try to get there. Finally, I think the other final problem is is a bit more of an organizational problem, meaning in a world right now in security where Historically, we've been growing the industry under, you know, unique vendors with a unique solution. Um, over time, we have the problem where there's so many different vendors with so many different solutions. And yeah, you know, some people will use platformization to go and kind of bundle all of those together. But realistically, you're still dealing with different vendors. So the, the final problem is in how do you grow, do you scale your organization without having to go and manage those hundreds of vendors and, you know, all the questionnaire, like all the overhead that goes along with it. So the reality is that a lot of the capabilities in security nowadays should be features, not products, not companies, but truly features. And so that's going to be, again, adding a lot more, um, a lot more friction in you know anybody wanting to go and and kind of build or assemble something that isn't just you know delivered uh, in a cookie cutter way. So I suspect we've covered most of these in the talk so far. But if you had to be succinct and summarize what the main benefits are for people currently using the SecOps Cloud platform, what would they be? Yeah. So so you're right. I think at this point, you know, f folks listening probably have a pretty good idea of connecting the dots, right? Really, it means that the value from using a SecOps cloud platform, I would compare it like it's moving from, you know, buying software in the 90s uh, to the cloud, to the cloud provider era. So it means number of vendors goes down, but the the amount of capabilities you get access to goes way up. It also means that you get to put in place the right solution for your own organization. You're not told by a vendor exactly what it is that you know that that you should be doing. Um, it means a reduction in cost in the vast majority of cases, and it means just gaining the ability to put in a lot more automation around what you're doing in your in your own security operations. So it means being able to take anything that you that you run, that you touch, that you monitor and being able to automate directly off of that and take action, which is a point that we'll we'll get back in a couple of minutes, right? So so being able to take action across all of those things. Um, being able to also feed other solutions and test other solutions very, very quickly uh, and without pain. So those are the types of values that you get from a SecOps cloud platform. You just spoke at Google Next where you let the cat out of the bag about a new capability we have formally released for the SecOps cloud platform. Can you tell folks on the call here about the key benefits of this new bi-directional functionality? Absolutely. Very excited about this. So bi-directionality, you know, conceptually is not necessarily something, you know, completely new, right? Like we've, we all know about SOAR, for example. The distinction is that we are adding these types of capabilities directly into the SecOps cloud platform, which provides a ton of value. So basically what we are doing is that we are enabling users to go and start taking action directly against 
any third party solution that they have. So it's not so much anymore that, you know, you're kind of stuck in a world where you have, let's say, your EDR and it is able to take action on the endpoint. And then you have some other, you know, platform to monitor that one SaaS vendor that you have. And maybe they have a little bit of automation and you kind of have to work differently with it. And you, you know, you onboard a new password manager and now, well, you don't have a way to go and monitor or take action there automatically. By baking all of this into the SecOps Cloud Platform, it means you're now able to take action against all of those, regardless of where they are. If it's coming into Lima Charlie, right? If the telemetry is flowing into Lima Charlie, you will be able to go and you know uh, lock lock a user, uh, stop a virtual machine, or do something on an endpoint, regardless of what it, of what it is or the third party, you're able to go and take action against it. So it's, it's really, a, it's a, a, a big, um, it's a big change, a big new value for Lima Chow. So you mentioned SOAR, but how is this different from other vendor solutions today? Yeah, so it's quite different in that it's baked into the platform I mentioned. What this means is that the one way that you are automating for one platform will be the same with other platforms. So I guess the, the, the tool sprawl is vastly limited. It's very, very simple and straightforward. It also means that you can mix the different types of sources of telemetry that you have, many of which are very uh, high throughput. Like, for example, if you take endpoint telemetry, there's a lot of events coming through. So uh, historically in a SOAR, you would have to really be careful about what it is that you bring in and when and how you want to automate it. With the SecOps Cloud Platform, it's part of the fabric of all of it. So it's just sort of a magic, you know, a magical capability that you have access wherever you want and however you want it. And finally, the speed at which that operates. So it's not the case where, you know, you have, uh, you know, 50 different sources of telemetry that go into four different, you know, uh, data repositories, and um, you have two different SOAR platforms, and the data needs to go from one place to the other through a queue to a SOAR that then, you know, tips a SIM that takes an action. None of that. It is all directly in the fabric of your security operations. It's just, again, the capability is just there at any point in time that you want to use it. So it allows you to go and be extremely responsive in how these things happen, right? You're not, you're not waiting 20 minutes for the right tip off to get to your SOAR to go and take action. Fundamentally, it happens in milliseconds. Thanks for taking the time to run us through all of this today, Maxime. It's really exciting the type of security future we can build using this approach. And given that the folks building cloud platforms and IT are still adding features, I'm assuming there is more to come for the SecOps cloud platform as well. Can you maybe give us a sneak peek into what is coming next? You know, fundamentally, the, the, the magic of, of the SecOps cloud platform, Lima Charlie, is truly to be able to just get on the platform spin up solutions in in seconds right like we we really want to drive that that like it's really completely different than whatever you've tried in the past and so the way that we want to expand in the future is we just want to keep giving that experience to people in new ways so that means that we're going to be focusing on providing really core capabilities, right? These primitives that we, we sometimes talk about, like meaning the, the really the core capabilities to people in unopinionated ways. So that does mean that we, uh, you know, as we will be expanding more primitives, uh, quite a few this year, more integrations, um, we will be, uh, you know, I can tell you that the direction we're not going in is that we're not building, you know, the most cutting edge AI, you know, like new wild thing. We really truly want to focus on removing the painful bits of infrastructure and capabilities that folks have to manage. So if you can think of any of those, we are probably tackling it uh, in the same way. Awesome. Thank you, Maxime. It's always a pleasure. Next up, I'll be speaking with Eric Capuano to discuss the SecOps Cloud Platform in the eyes of security service providers. 
If you've ever considered starting an MSSP or defer shop or currently working at one, maybe looking to make your existing stack more efficient, please come check out that discussion. The link to that session can be found in the description below and we'll drop a link in the comments as well. We appreciate your time and hope you can see how the SecOps Cloud platform is the secret weapon you need to provide better, more efficient services with higher margins than ever before. All of these sessions today are available on our website and on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to learn more about how the SecOps Cloud platform can help you, please schedule a demo with our team. All links are listed below in the description. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you at the top of the hour for the next session, starting in just a moment.